Hello and welcome to Needing and Meeting. My name is Carol. I'll be your host today. How's everybody doing? I have not opened the chat yet, but I do have Ben here with me. There he is. How are you? Not bad. How are you doing? Okay. Good to see you. Oh, yeah, you look you look rather happy today. Right on. I can't complain. <laughs> Well, I let's see if she's here. Oh, I guess not. Um, I well, not to steal her thunder, but I did hear that poor Tara had to. She was getting ready to take her tests and everything, and apparently there was technical difficulties. Oh no! So, <laughs> oh, poor oh, Tara. Hey, Sandy, Wendy. Hey, Henny. Good to see you guys. If I am missing anybody, it's because Restream doesn't show me the chat. I hear an echo, Ben. Really? Yeah, a whistle and an echo. Yeah, that fixed it. There she is. Are you on? Hey, Plant Freak. How are you? Miss Sunrise Dawn, hi. I'm so sorry about your kitty. I know it's hard. I, I you know, I know it personally. You know, I, it still gets me about sugar sometimes, so I get it. Anyway, I, I saw you in the in the boat this morning. Hello, Shannon Smith. Good to see you. Can are you on, Ben? I'm here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I am. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I realized I had it was pumping sound out to my headphones. I was using the little itty bitty headphones, and the head it was it was pumping out to both sets. So, <laughs> so how do you like your new place, Stasia? Uh -oh. Can you hear me? You can you hear me? Jump off and come back on because I'm choppy. Okay. 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 Well, oh, her room has color. Right. Oh wait. Yeah. Let's see now. Nope. No. It might oh, have just Sarah. been my uh, trying to use my Bluetooth. Uh, yes. That's there we That's go. Good. Let's try not to use the Bluetooth then. Bluetooth is temperamental, I've noticed. It is. Yeah, I've noticed that there, myself. Hope I, if I didn't say, hey, Tara, I'm saying, hey, no. <laughs> Poor Tara. She, <laughs> you would have thought, you would have thought I, I would have hear... caught on it up. You got her? Okay. Yeah. Talk to us. Hey, how are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you. How are you all? Doing okay. Did you get to take your test? No, I did not get to take my test. I, all kinds of technical difficulties. So um, I don't want to interrupt Stasia. I, I saw the beginning of the stream as I was trying to. Oh, uh oh. And we lost her. No, oh, she's in the there. <laughs> What? Okay, another another technical difficulty is not surprising to me. Mercury okay. in retrograde. It it is indeed. It is indeed. But Stacia, you're in a new place. I yes. am. I am. Um, I'll explain really quick, and then I'm gonna hop off and come back on because so I can hear you guys better. Because right now the sound is super super low, but um, everything seems to be going well. And you know, adjusting. My brain hasn't stopped, but today was a very, very big day. A lot of appointments. I'll have to jump off possibly early, depending on what time we finish today, because an appointment moved, of course. So I'm going to have to deal with that last one. But um, all in all, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just exhausted trying to like figure out a new place and new sounds and all of the extra stresses, you know a major date coming up in a couple of weeks and it's just it's it's just a lot in the brain that's all 
And oh, and trying to get used to new social workers. That's, you know, oh, I was boy. very comfortable with the previous social workers at the house. And now I've got to try and get used to social workers here and re-explain a lot of what's happened so that they understand me and so that they understand where I'm coming from in the situation. And it's a lot to go back through it. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I can imagine, I can only imagine, but yeah. Yeah. So that's, it's been good, but difficult at the same time. You know, sure. I understand it's a step forward, slightly sideways, but it's a step forward. And all that I can do is keep putting in the efforts and that's, it is enough. It is enough. So just keep putting in the efforts, keep doing what I'm doing. And that's what I can do. Right on. Yeah. And I'm just going to pop off and pop back on so I can hear you guys better. <laughs> so what happened, Tara? Oh, my gosh. All right. So I tried to log in. Uh, I'm supposed to have taken an online test. I tried to log in five minutes before check-in. My check-in was supposed to be at 2, and then the exam was supposed to start at 2.30 yesterday. And I tried to check in five minutes before two. It wouldn't let me. So I checked in right at two on the dot. And they have you upload a photograph. They, they have you like click on a link. They send you a text message link. Sure. And then you upload a photograph through that link of your face. They want to make sure it's you. And then you upload a photograph of your ID, the front and the back. And those things worked for me. I was able to successfully upload those photographs. So I know that okay. some part of it worked for me. But then I got to the part, they want you to upload four photographs of your area, like your desk that you're at, so they can okay. make sure that you don't have study she, materials. She, she, or yeah. Exactly, exactly. Hmm. So I tried doing that, and when I clicked on the link, just like I clicked on the other ones, I couldn't upload any photographs, and it wouldn't let me move to the next step because wow. I couldn't upload the photographs. And so I shut everything down, I rebooted everything, and still I wasn't able to upload the photographs. So oh, I remembered, man. I know, I, I was... My my cortisol level spiked like sky high. Oh my god! That's yeah, that's easy. Yeah, and because yeah. I'm on I'm on scholarship, and so this exam is paid for. But if I don't pass it, or like if I fail to show up, then I forfeit my scholarship, and I'll have to pay the next time I take it. And oh so, god. yeah, and so I remember when I registered that it said if you have any technical difficulties, then to reach out to technical support. So that's what I did. And I was able to connect with somebody in a chat, you know, like the online chat supports that they, that companies have. Mm -hmm. And um, he tried to help me troubleshoot, but what he was telling me, he told me to do the same thing I had already done, close everything down and open it, it back up again. So I did that again, it did not work. And so by this time it was, 10 minutes until my test was supposed to start. And I was just like, I am, I told him, I was like, I am really concerned that I'm going to be late for this test. I checked in right at two and it's not working for me. And um, he said, don't worry, I'm going to create a support ticket for you. Pearson View is the name of the testing company will reach out to you. And so last night, a few hours after the exam should have been over, I got, got an email saying, like they they were apologetic. They were like, our sincerest apologies for the stress that this caused you. I was like, okay, at least they acknowledge that that was incredibly stressful. Um, right. And, and, and they uh, said that the issue should be resolved and that I could re, they had canceled my exam and I could re-register for it. So okay. I, okay. the next available time that worked for me is on Tuesday at the okay. same time at, at two o'clock. So. Okay. It looks, hopefully I'm able to take the exam on Tuesday and get some more studying in, I guess. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Well, if, if we need to get Henny involved with this, let me know. 
<laughs> how, how, how would how would Henny help? What would Henny do? Oh, she has some. She whoops some. Go get it. You know, what, some yeah. booty. <laughs> oh, I feel like I need okay. to pick Henny on some of my situations. Just be like, nope, nope. Here, just deal with Henny. <laughs> we can unleash the Henny. I'm open to unleashing Henny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I did take the time yesterday because uh, I was in test mode and sure. I've been thinking of people have been telling me you should do some tutoring on the side because I tutored math for three years when I was in university. And yeah. uh, so since I was in test mode, I signed up for this online tutoring platform and took a couple of math tests and passed those. Thank God. <laughs> thank God. Mm -hmm. I passed them. Uh, so. I use my time wisely, I think, just to make some extra cash on the side. But okay. man, it, it was definitely stressful. But I really appreciate y'all asking and being interested. Well, yeah, well, of, well course. of course. Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I wouldn't mind picking your brain on how you got into some of that, you know, at some point. We don't have to do it today, but at some point I'd love to, I, it was suggested yesterday that I might look into that because I am, In I'm looking for a vocation. You know, I was my mother's caregiver for 12 years and a lot can happen in 12 years in the job market and in yourself, especially if you're getting older, like I am, you know, I'm, I'll be 59 this year. And so yeah. Anyway, and just so just so we're clear on this one point, I realize you weren't here yesterday. I need you people to have lives because I don't have one. So of course <laughs> I'm interested in this Tara because I have no life, so I have to live vicariously. So, well, I'm happy to share my life. I've been super busy lately, which is. A great improvement from where I was a year ago. I was so depressed a year ago. I couldn't barely get out of bed. And so it feels so good to be busy and up and running. And it's like, yeah, I'm dealing with technical difficulties. But I, I think I think challenges are a sign that we're working towards something worthwhile. Because yeah. if challenges are bound to come up, it's like Murphy's Law, right? So it's like... Yeah. It's like uh, working in a restaurant. I worked in restaurants for 10 years and it's like glasses break, you know, it's like part of the territory. It's like, yeah. you know, someone's working hard if you hear a dish fall or, <laughs> yeah. or a glass shatter or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do yeah. really, I do really appreciate what you were saying about your cortisol spiking. It's amazing how you know something granted and that's an important thing a test but still it amazes me how even when something routine comes up and something that's just something small it's like oh my god this isn't working dumb 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 okay what am i doing yeah. wrong how does this work how does this work and yeah you can fall in you know from a composure to collapse pretty quickly mm-hmm yeah, I'm glad I was able to keep it together and connect with somebody before the test actually started because it was actually surprisingly difficult to get to that contact information and to mm. yeah they 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 hopped on the chat really fast once I connected to mm -hmm. it, but it was kind of hard to find it. So I'm happy yeah. I was able to to navigate. And there was a part of me in the back of my head, I was like, "Is this a test?" Like, are they trying to, do they do this? To, is this hazing? Like, what is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and again, I can relate with those thoughts. <laughs> what, what's more, the first words out of your mouth should have been, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Carol, to your uh, question or your like, um, expression earlier about wanting to pick my brain i'm open to it anytime now okay. later if you want to you know dedicate some mm -hmm. time to it whether it's on your live or whether it's just like via email or if you want to hop on a zoom or whatever it is i'm totally open to answering any question you have 
Well, you know, I mean, I, I really don't even have a have an, enough of a reference to ask the questions. You know, how did you first get into it? Peer support specifically? Yeah. Okay, so I was seeing a therapist. It was, this is when I was still living in uh, um, a homeless shelter, as a matter of fact, because uh, I, I only got out of the homeless shelters about 16 months ago, something like that. And okay. so at the, at, towards the end, because I lived in shelters for two years, towards the end of that, I was working with a therapist and she suggested that I apply for a lived experience leader position at okay. this local nonprofit. And they, the nonprofit works with people who are experiencing homelessness. And so I was like, well, that sounds right up my alley. I have lived experience and I have leadership experience also. So I interviewed for that. I started volunteering with the organization and applied for that job. I interviewed for it, didn't end up getting it. They ended up going with mm -hmm. someone who had uh, more education than me. And also, yeah. I don't think it was the education. I think it was the fact that they had been housed and I was still unhoused at that time, still living in shelters. Okay. And they okay. had already gone through the whole like being housed and figuring out how to be self-sufficient again. And so mm -hmm. it, it was a, a little bit of a blow to the ego, I guess you could say that I didn't get that because I thought it was in the bag based on how the interview went and everything. Yeah. But um, I continued to volunteer for the organization and I learned about peer support as a function of volunteering for that organization. And they okay. handed me this uh, flyer that said scholarships were available for this peer support specialist training. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, this sounds really interesting. I I have a minor, like I have a bachelor's degree in engineering, but I, my minor in university was psychology. And so yeah. I I just have like an affinity toward it. I'm drawn to that type of material. And yeah. so the idea of working in peer support, helping people who are going through the same things that I've been through yeah. and have fought tooth and nail to recover from was really right. appealing to me. And so I yeah. was like, I actually started the process of um, like applying for that scholarship, but then I got cold feet and I was like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not kind of like what Stasia was saying a little, like she thought that that type of work might be triggering um, at some point. And I had the same exact thoughts and fears. And I was like, I'm not ready for this. I don't want to put myself in a compromised situation or, or get triggered. And yeah. so then three months later, I was having a conversation with my therapist. And it, I had moved on to a different therapist at this time. The, the original one was like an interim therapist because I moved to a new place. And so she wasn't technically my therapist. She just worked with me until I could find a permanent therapist. Okay. Yeah. And that's who I work with now. So I was talking with my now therapist and I was like, you know, I think I might actually want to give that peer support thing a try again. Um, and this time I was ready for it. And I actually went through yeah. the application process. I got the scholarship. Thank God they still had the scholarships yeah. and went through the, tra went through the training. Uh, the scholarship program that I'm in requires that you engage with what's called ongoing peer support training classes for three months mm -hmm. before you can actually take the Medi-Cal peer support exam, which is okay. what I, which is what I tried to take yesterday. So right. um, still very much at the beginning of my journey, but I have been offering a lot of peer support as a volunteer on my YouTube channel and practicing it on friends and family. And, and doing the ongoing peer support training courses to get more experience. But that's how it happened. It kind of just, I, I want to say it fell in my lap, but not really. I had to work for it, but it was just like a function of one foot in front of the other, investigating different things, starting that volunteer 
gig, uh, which now it looks like I'm going to, well, I actually have an interview for that company again on Monday. Okay. And it'll be a, a hybrid. Um, it, it's a shoe in. I, I don't want to like be too overzealous about having that job, but right. I've been volunteering for them for a year and they're look, they're opening a daytime navigation center and they're looking to hire all the people mm. in this lived experience group mm. that have been volunteering. So okay. it's kind of like, I, I think I'm in, you know, I think I'm actually going to get this job. So, um, yeah, that, that's how it happened. And it, it's, it's been a natural progression that has felt comfortable and right. Right on. Yeah. I wonder, I do, you need, do you need to, okay, go ahead, Ben. Oh, I was just going to ask in your minor, what was your funnest class or what do you consider your funnest class in uh, for your minor in psychology? You know what? I really liked abnormal psychology. I was going to ask if, if that was because yeah, there's some some programs I looked at and that was, you know, post not postgraduate, but, you know, pretty high up there. And I was like, oh, man, you know, I want to start with this stuff. I was going to ask if they. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, social psychology was really great too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing? Is that is that different than sociology? I think a social psychologist is different than a sociologist. Yeah, they're okay. different. Okay. Is there a place to apply or get an application? Henny wants to know. I would depend on the state that you're in, yeah. uh, in California. Where, where is Henny at? Does, do we know where Henny's at? New York. New York. New York. New, New, New York. New New York. York. I can't do it. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. I don't know about New York, but I would look up, um, look up what the mental health association is in your state here. It's called Cal Mesa, but in New York, it's going to be something different. Um, Cal Mesa is the entity that certifies peer support specialists. So if you just do a Google search for mm. mental health, New York, I'll bet you one of the top three things that pops up will be the entity that certifies peer support specialists in your state. And you could probably put in the search bar of that website, peer support, and then mm. go from there. Okay. Uh -oh. Poor plant. She keeps falling out. Asking for a friend. <laughs> if they're in California, I could tell them exactly what to do in California. But I think I would imagine the process would be similar. But, you know, it might be worth looking into local organizations like the one that I'm going to be working for it's um, what I'm going to be doing for them is like a hybrid role. It's like hybrid peer support and like welcoming people in to the center. So it's like, I'm on the welcome. I I'm going to get paid to welcome people into the center and then to provide peer support as needed. But uh, looking into agencies like that, that serve the unhoused population, perhaps starting with a shelter or just doing a Google right. search like for nonprofits that work with people who are unhoused yeah. or who do philanthropic work, mm -hmm. they might have information on how to get a scholarship to a, a okay. program in your area. That's yeah. what happened with me. And I mean, if you can get a scholarship, why not? Yeah. Uh, Tara Smiling, how familiar are you with Grafting and geometry requirements for, say, a GED. I actually remember I told you I uh, signed up to be an online tutor just on the side yesterday, and I passed the GED test. So I'm happy to report I passed that, <laughs> um, and I I did well. And I tutored math for three years. I'm really really strong. I'm guessing that you meant graphing. Um, I'm really strong in mathematics. I've tutored mm. up to calculus three and differential equations in geometry. Oh. Is a wow. Strong wow. suit of yeah. mine. So it's amazing. Yeah, Ned, if you're looking for someone to help you or a friend, I 
and your girl. <laughs> That's awesome. Next time I have a trick question, <laughs> it's coming your way. What what kind of question, Ben? Trig. Oh, trig. Yeah, tr it's so fun. I it's like oh, it's like math. It's like whoa. <laughs> What's the fun word now? <laughs> it is. Fun. It's like a puzzle. It's, it's like a puzzle, like a like a riddle. Well, not a riddle. It's like a puzzle. I can't agree with you more. It's um, I I didn't go through university but i had a friend who was doing university level calculus so every time he was done with his textbook he'd send it my way and i was oh like God. this is so much fun <laughs> it is so much fun it is so That's especially That's especially it's super fun cal calculus when you get to bust out the trig and you're like okay okay the, and like expansion of identities and all of that i just find it so much fun Oh my God! I'd be in, I'd be a puddle of tears. I'd be <laughs> I'll be honest. I was not I've, because there's definite answers. I've definitely <laughs> I've definitely cried over calculus homework before. I'm not gonna try to make it seem like it was easy for me, but I enjoy it. <laughs> Um, so Ned, I saw your comment about your oldest is trying to um, get her GED, but she's bad at math. If she seriously, like if she wants some help, I'm very capable of helping her with uh, that level of math. Right on. That's right on. So Katie and Mean Girl said she loves math because it's the one language that's universal. Absolutely. I just, man, I wish I could understand it. <laughs> you know, understand. I used to think I was bad at math. In like seventh grade, I, I got really depressed. That's when my dad went to prison and I had a lot of emotional issues. And I got lost in math. I just stopped paying attention and I got left behind. And I yeah. thought I wasn't good at it. I thought I wasn't smart in that area. But then uh, I'm a non-traditional university student. I didn't go right to college out of high school. I bartended for a few years and then went back and found that when I just, I started with one class mm -hmm. and got an A and then I took two classes the next semester and I got A's. One of those classes happened to be math. And I was like, I, I was really enjoying it. And that was su surprising to me, but when I was able to apply myself and not be dealing with all the stuff of my childhood and early adolescence, mm. e even though I was very much in my addiction at that time, I really found that I mm. excelled in mathematics, contrary to what That's I thought. Fun. I had a great instructor at the community college where I went um, for the very first year of algebra and he 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 really took an interest in us being able to learn math which is they're not they don't have to do that when you get to college level it's not there they don't they yeah. have no obligation whatsoever yeah so when you find somebody that that cares that you learn that's pretty amazing well, yeah, the, the jump straight in the university. I mean, I, I've seen, I've seen some classes that are just fascinating to me, but they were taught at the university level, very traditional. They can take the funnest subject and make it so boring. It's like reading Prince Harry's book. I mean, it's like, <laughs> oh, like oh, this makes my eyes bleed. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they, they can, oh, so yeah, I, I really do appreciate that, Carol. Um, before we got going on all this, Ben, I was wondering, wanting to ask you about how you found the lifeboat and uh, what, what, what it was that uh, drew you in and kept you in. Well, um, let's see. I, I did have all the, um, um, the experience in dealing with um, 
uh, you know, past trauma and all my therapy for that. But I was actually, I've always been a bird. Um, I've always been into uh, studying subcultures. And that sounds so nerdy. But um, Area 51, the thing I liked about it, it's a subculture. And it's like all the people theorizing about all the stuff going on and about how they have their own little, you know, because their own little existence out there. And then Scientology, Aaron, and then okay. Tommy appeared. And yeah, that's how I got okay. to the light bulb. Right on. Was Aaron the first channel that you watched on Scientology? Um, I hmm. I think I think Aaron was the first YouTube video I see okay. on Scientology because I came in at uh, from the um the back Leo in Remini the days. Show? Yeah, well, back in the days of uh, Cult Awareness Network before Scientology. Oh, okay, out. okay, okay. Uh, uh, Mark Headley's book. Uh, that was before, um, yeah, it was before a lot of things that, re you know, fairly recent. But yeah, yeah. his book, um, uh, the OG, uh, they keep calling her OG. Um, oh, what was her name? Uh, Magoo. Um, yes, oh, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. I, I watch her stuff. Uh, okay. Tori Magoo and, and her, uh, a lot of the stuff she talks about on the web. I was in a lot of those. Um, there used to be a Usenet group called Alt Scientology, where people would talk about Scientology and Is things that like that. Private chat group that used to get it, punked by by it, Scientology. It, it wasn't private. It was. Okay. It was just in the early days of the web. There, you had to have a kind of a special tool to access it. Um, right. But yeah, it. Uh, um, yeah, that was my exposure. It was just. Uh, early, early stuff. And I just always, I don't know why. Um, I suppose it, it might just be the cult angle and having had some experiences with it, just, just able to see this is similar, this isn't, this isn't, this is. And then I started studying other cults like, wow, okay, check that off, check that off, check that off. But yeah, Scientology has mm -hmm. always been my first, the first one I've studied because it's okay. so pronounced. It's yeah. not subtle in the least bit, so no. it's probably yeah. good starter material. Kind of like uh, if you want to study body language, one of the best part, uh, kind of one of the best things to do is um, watch ghost videos because it's so it's so basic, it's so obvious. Um, it's kind of it's starter Scientology is kind of starter material because there's so much there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I. Uh... I had heard of Scientology, but when I went to LA and I drove by that big building, the the big ominous blue building, big blue, yeah, ooh, that thing gave me the creepy creeps. It was a hospital before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a hospital before, and then they purchased it. So I just that alone kind of gave me the creeps once I figured out that it was a hospital, and then watching some of the videos lately, it just I think it was Big Blue where the help sign was put, was it not? The help sign and tape? Mm, yes. Yes, it yeah. was. Okay. Somebody on the inside put tape that spelled out help, and they had taken it down, but there was so much dirt around it that it still says help up there. So somebody from the inside was trying to reach the protesters on the outside. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. When was that? Um, Last week? Yeah. Wow. wow, that's intense. And, it, and I, I know it's it's kind of a guilty pleasure I like to engage in, but I like watching the protests. It's just fascinating to me. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he's here, Lord Kiss Freak, and I. Uh, a lot of times we'll start watching we'll start watching the protesters and shooting back and forth uh, messages on Facebook. You know, this guy's doing this, this guy's doing that, and oh, did you see and. Yeah, you know, now that I don't have TV, it's like oh, this is this is kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, so well, it, it, slow it down a little bit on the protesters. Go ahead. What? Yeah. what? I, I've had to slow down a little bit on the protests. There's just too many channels now. There's so much going on, um, and I'm allowing it to affect me a little bit. And I don't know if it's I'm allowing myself. Or if it's just, I have so much going on, I can't separate it. 
you know, I, I, I don't have the, the mental bandwidth to separate it. So I need to kind of take my step back, but there's a, there's a channel, uh, life after a cult, uh, her name's Natalie. She does really good, like breakdowns. So yeah. like, if you just want digestible material, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Just, I can't follow all the rabbit holes of watching all of the protest videos anymore. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be that. That's getting to be where that would be a full time job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it it is interesting watching the protests, and to be honest, I do tend to get same way as far as emotions go. I've been trying to learn, and I keep using the wrong term. It's not disconnection, but it's a term that means to separate yourself from the emotions. And I keep wanting to use the term disconnection, but that isn't it. It's it's actually a yoga term, or it's used in yoga a lot. And it's like distancing or how to distance yourself from, um, you know, if, if you're around a lot of trauma, people talking about trauma. You oh, have disassociating? Practice. Not disassociation. Okay. Um, Detachment? Like hmm? detaching yourself from it? Detachment. Mm, yeah, detachment. So, oh, yeah. yeah that, Thank that you, was, Google. That was one of the things <laughs> that I studied in the, that, uh, putting myself in that center. And it, it's one of the skills that they reviewed, but I never really absorbed. So I've been trying to find more on that. So, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm working on it. Who knows if I'll get there. But I think that that one's a long process, especially when for a lifetime, an individual has not understood what detachment is. It's not yeah. disassociation. It's not disconnection. It's something completely different and just not letting things affect you that are not yours to affect you. Yeah. And, and I think I, that that's something we all struggle with. Yeah. And I, I know that empathy has a world of people who are empathetic. They naturally have to do this as well. And there's some, you know, grounding and things like that, that you can do that, uh, um, Christy uh, does and things like that. That helps, but yeah, I, I've been I've been working on that for quite a while because um, that is something that I've always had problems with. Is somebody walks by and you kind of you, you can you can pick up on their emotions, and if you're not you know careful, it can like you, know, you can, <laughs> it's just oh yeah, it, it, it's it can be such a headache at times. And it's like okay, how do you set aside these are not my feelings to feel. This belongs to them. There's no virtue in me taking these on. I'm not right. making things easier for them. I mean, it can help you right. empathize with people and talk to where yeah. they're at. But, you know, there's no virtue in, you know, this is this person I don't know is crying about something. It does mean no good past that to carry that with me. You know, there. I mean, I could still, I could feel sure. sorrow for the person, but, um, you know, to to be an emotional wreck about it, that doesn't lighten their load at all. No, it doesn't, and it certainly doesn't yeah. do you any good. Yeah, that's true. Well, exactly. But it's it's hard not to get caught up sometimes, though. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, but that's something I've been working on. I think and that's something... where. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say something that um, the last house were telling me, like they're like, you're always smiling, it doesn't matter. And I never really put it together until Ben said that. I don't want my shit on other people because I know what it feels like when other people's, the stuff, sorry, I didn't realize I swore for a second. Other people's mm -hmm. stuff is on me. I don't like it, so I don't want to put my stuff on other people. Mm -hmm. so, and now that I can at least understand what it is, maybe I can work on it a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, Tara, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's okay. I was just going to say, I think that's where the strong support system comes into play because we study vicarious traumas. I am mm. hearing it being called, um, we learned it as it's called secondary trauma yeah. just in, the, in the curriculum and the importance of a support system, a, yeah. a a broad support system. so you know a therapist a mentor mm -hmm. friends family mm. um your supervisor as a peer support specialist all of those things are really important if we're going to protect ourselves from yeah. like or 
secondary trauma. Yeah, no. Like, like go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was just going to say it. No. <laughs> 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 I was just thinking that that is that, you know, if you think of every single person that needs that, how is that going to be accomplished? There was, there are so many people that don't have any kind of support system. Mm -hmm. And that's where peer support is a great segue. It's a great way to provide support to somebody who doesn't know what that would be like. And then that peer support specialist is there with that person while they build their support system and engage with services and get their life back essentially, or, or get a life period. Yeah. You know, somebody did that for me back in the day and uh, yeah, in a random thing. Um, I was, I was through, uh, maybe more like four or five years into sobriety when, um, and I used to be a chain smoker bad, especially when I was drinking mm -hmm. and I'd wake up the next morning and I know I smelled like stale beer and cigarettes and I was a hairdresser. Can you imagine, you know, and I kept wondering why I was losing clients at the time. And then it dawned on me like four or five years later, I'm like, Oh, and I was so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I didn't even give it a second thought when I was out there using. Hmm. Me one, either. one of the things that's always helped me, because I, I can still go back and it's like, oh my God, that was so embarrassing, but is realizing, at least as far as uh, things that were embarrassing, a good scandals were three days and then chances are other people aren't probably not going to remember it. But yeah, it's like, yeah, that's one of the things we like to do is no, that's mine and hold on to it. And like, no, <laughs> kind of torture ourselves <laughs> with it. Yeah. yeah. I did that for a while, for, you know, for about a, about a lot of things, really, you know, I had plenty to be, uh, to beat myself up about once yeah. I got sober and started coming to the light of day and seeing what I had, what had become, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something that, yeah. you know, I'm starting to, I'm, I've already struggled with, but I'm starting to realize what is it serving me? Holding on to it. What is it serving me? Yeah. yeah. Beating myself up over it. What is it serving me? Can I do anything about it now? No, I need to be able to, you, um, how Christy had put it this way to me, basically mourn the person that I was because I'm never going to have her back. Yeah. And just become the person I want to be. And if holding on to those things is going to deter me from becoming the person I want to be, then what is it serving? Me? Yeah. Right. True. Very true. How's that? How, how are you coming with that? <laughs> Well, this week has been hard, okay? <laughs> but you know what? All in all, I'm getting better at it. It's just, it's a lot of practice. It's a lot of practice. And I feel like a month from now, it's not going to be as hard. Two months from now, it's not going to be as hard. I don't think it's ever going to go away. Right. I think there's always going to be some situation where I'm like, oh, I could have done better, whether it's a new one or an old one. I could have done better, but I, I just the practice and of being able to say, no, what is that doing for me dwelling on this right now? Then it yeah. gets easier down the line to work through it. That's true. It does. You yeah. know, especially when you are working through it. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it is like a practice, something you actually have to practice. And the way I like to look at it is it's a muscle. You, it's a muscle you yeah. have to work to be able to strengthen, to be able to use properly. Right. Yeah, like anything else, like anything with the brain, you neural pathways, the more you use them, the thicker they get. And uh, that works both ways. You have bad behaviors, your, your yeah. brain, um, like neuroplasticity starts to go down the older you get. And, uh, it'll become harder and harder to change uh, bad behaviors. So. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I, I feel pretty lucky that I did it in my 20s. Mm. Not that it's impossible in your 40s or your 50s, mm. but yeah. I, but I, there would have been the whole thing of I would have had to have survived to see my 40s. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I wasn't going to do that when I was out there drinking and using. It wasn't going to be possible. I knew it. I knew I, I knew that I was not that I was not long for this world. It 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 was just something that was always there when I was out there drinking and using, you know. And then when I hit 30, I'm like, well, now what? <laughs> I lived like I wasn't gonna get to see 30. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm here. What do I do now? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I'm glad you made it. Same. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I am too. I did too. Most days. <laughs> <laughs> we all have bad days though. We all have bad days. I'm just trying to remember how my recovery management person had put it to me. Oh, it's starting to pour in rain. I'm sorry. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, they, they had said to me, your brain's working against you. You're, as an addict, your brain is constantly working against you. It's constantly telling you, yes, yeah, constantly physiology. telling you the wrong choice. This yeah. is what made me feel good before. It'll make me feel good again. But now you've got to go into your memory bank and be like, no, no, it didn't do anything good for me. You know, yeah. this was all of the problems that came along with it. So you constantly have to be tricking your brain. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I hit that six month mark and then I started having issues. Like I haven't used, but I hit that six month mark and I was just like, I'm overwhelmed again and I'm exhausted and all I want to do is sleep. And, you know, I just, I want one night's sleep that's more than four hours. And maybe if I smoked a little bit, I'd get more than four hours. But I'm like, no, I can't go down that path because I know that that one will end up to one every night and that one every night will eventually turn into one every hour again. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh no, seven feel better. Yeah, seven is starting to get a migraine. I'm so sorry, you're you're dealing with that. That sucks. Can that bird hear me? <laughs> no, I don't think I, I don't think he can hear me. So. <laughs> I think it's all the head banging he's done it over the years. And... <laughs> that poor bird. It was so cute the last time, though, Ben, when you took your headphones out. And Carol was like, hey, bird, just stopped. You're like, he, all he's doing is looking around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. I, I have to do a lot of redirecting around here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can only imagine. I with a jet alone would be enough redirection for me. Be like, that's enough for a lifetime, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I I yet I just get a kick, the biggest kick out of him. Oh yeah. He's a mess. Feel better, seventh son. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Today's the first day I haven't had a full migraine all day. So really? I can understand. I, oh, it's been. How long have you my, been? Like I said, my brain is not shutting off. It is just not shutting off. But I know that that's the change in scenery. I know that that was all of my appointments today. It was just too much all at once. And my yeah. brain was reacting and my body followed suit. Gonna try to crash again. <laughs> okay. Hope you feel better too, Matrix. Yeah. I love hearing Carol Carol talk to the bird. Right. <laughs> Speaking of Carol talking, Carol, can I ask you a question about Absolutely. your recent medication change? Yeah. Right on. So 
I'm curious if I, sorry if you said this already and I missed it, but um, I'm curious what the change was. If you, they just, they just up the dosage of the, uh, of the Abilify. Um, nothing new medication wise, just, just upping the dosage. There was one day, a couple of days ago where I was like, Oh, I'm, I think, I think I'm getting better, but I think I've taken a couple of steps back, but I don't know if it's just because I didn't sleep well, mm. you know, and I wonder how much sleep affects meds when you're, when they're, when, when your body's trying to adjust to the changes but that's all it was. It's just uh, just uh, doubling the dose that I was taking. I'm still yeah. taking the, everything else that I was taking. Just elevating that one. Yeah. Ha okay. Have you noticed um, any like like significant differences at all? Just a, being a little foggy. Hmm. Like I was really foggy when I first started taking it. Um, but since it's already in my system now, I've just, I'm just kind of in a, what I think of as kind of like a mini fog, mm. you know, it's just kind of there, but not like just so overwhelming that I can't do, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, other than that, um, I want to do, um, to find a way to do the testing to see if, if there's some ADHD or something like that, that's affecting me also. And uh, my doctor was saying that-, that, brings, that, up you know, that brings up a question for me, for Ben. Ben, the DSM-5 that you have, would you have the test for that? Because I understand that testing, at least for myself and a couple of people that I knew in, or that I know in the States, self Quiz, like taking the quiz yourself and taking it to the doctor can save some of the process. I was just wondering if maybe we could connect you and Carol with that. For I mean, ADHD. I mean, oh, oh, oh. Um, wow. <laughs> he wasn't expecting an intense question. <laughs> I'll chime in for a second and let Ben compose himself. Uh, so There's no composing my, me. Uh, my, <laughs> my, my test was exactly what you're describing, Stasia. It, my nurse practitioner simply pulled open her DSM yeah. and asked me a series of questions and then wrote me a script, which has okay. been a game changer for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah mine, mine was, I'm trying to recall, um, <clears throat> Mine was part of the testing I had up at um, the center in Tucson um, long ago. Um, yeah, I bet the field has changed. I did take one online, and you know, online tests are kind of dangerous because a lot of them are, you know. Um, okay, well, I wondered but, about that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I like to, if I'm going to go that route, I like to take multiple ones and then kind of average them out and hoping that the error. Um, but yeah, doing that, I'm trying to recall how many. I want to say three, two, yeah. two. I took two and both of them, I, I scored positive, positive, but I was at the lower end. Um but then talking to uh, my friends who have um, ADHD, they describe everything they describe. It's like, yeah, I, c I can relate to that. I can relate to that. But yeah, I was first diagnosed by a, um, I'm trying to recall if it was part of the MMP, uh, the Minnesota, I don't think it was part of the MMPI. Maybe Tara would know. I don't recall. I did so much testing up there. It's all running together for me. I, I know, well, no, the MMPI is the one where you start looking over your shoulder because they keep asking you, do you feel like you're being watched? Oh, of course not. <laughs> Are you sure you're not being watched? Well, I did, but okay, I do now. now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of, it kind of reminds me when you go for a security clearance. Um, are, are you a Soviet spy? No. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, you're sure. Yes, you're a Soviet spy. <laughs> Come on. 
I'm not sure, Ben, to answer that. I, I'm trying. I don't recall. I don't remember what test it was. There's yeah, so maybe. many of them. Yeah. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I, I, there was something I did. It may have just been the doctor just sitting saying, you know, I see this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. yeah. And that's what, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 no. I, I fully accept that. that. That is what happened with me. My nurse practitioner actually identified it in me. I had no idea. And yeah. she said that she has seen in her practice, they, they don't teach this, but in her practice, she has noticed that there is a correlation between women in particular, uh, men too, but she said it happens more with women, that if uh, they have untreated ADHD, it will manifest as depression. Mm -hmm. She said that, really? mm -hmm, she said that um, with undiagnosed or untreated ADHD, the brain, and we know like women have parallel thought processes at the same time that's more difficult for us to compartmentalize mm -hmm. and we can't we can't help it and so we wake up and like i'm the type of person who i wake up and i like if i'm not if i haven't taken my medication yet my brain is doing all these things i'm overwhelmed and so i don't want to get out of bed i just want mm -hmm. to lay it's exhausting to have all yeah. of those thoughts going through your yes. head yes and, it and, is. and 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 that's like I think women's brains do that kind of naturally, but if you add untreated ADHD on top of that, it's like grounds for depression and not wanting to get out of bed or doing anything because you're just so overwhelmed. So anyways, she noticed that. That, um, that resonates, yeah. I bet, I bet. And, yeah. and so that's when she's like, have you ever been tested for ADHD? And I was like, no, I kind of thought it was silly, but she asked me the questions and I meet the criteria. So now I'm, tr I have, my condition is treated and I'm able mm -hmm. to function at a much higher level without self-medicating. Cause mm -hmm. I was, I was using drugs and alcohol to self-medicate to be able to manage it before. And I was able to yeah. get through school that way. But yes. now that I'm not self-medicating anymore, uh, I need help. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of mine, I, like I said, I think I think mine manifests, I think I'm at the lower end. Um, I mean, I base that just, I am easily distractible, yes. But uh, I do still think I'm at the lower end, just knowing people who have it. And again, the quantity of worthless tests, um, you know, I find, like my depression, I'm at the level where sometimes I need uh, help. A lot of times I'm able to skate by uh, doing other things, relaxing. Thankfulness is a big one for my depression. Um, and then, you know, trying just to do, um, you know, just, just trying to be mindful about different things. That helps me a little bit. But, yeah, there are. If I'm stressed, if I'm under a lot of stress, yeah, I need help with that. Um, Which leads me to the that, new. Yep. What were you going to say? I was just going to respond to one of Misha's comments. It's a this the last one. I'll wait until you bring it up. It's okay. <laughs> Which leads to the new thing term the lost girls due to lack of understanding and diagnosis toward ADHD female, females until more recently yeah and the with the generation of the lost girls we've also been taught that wearing the mask that helps us um hide our ADHD is normal and is okay and that this is what society needs us to do now that's creating a whole different problem because now we don't understand what is the mask what is our adhd a lot of women internalize their adhd yes they may subtly fit it, fidget in a chair i shake my leg or i rub my feet together it's called cricketing when you rub your feet together yep my nails i, I do, do my nails all the time constantly i'm doing this yeah 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 um and then another one's my hair if my hair is in a braid I'll, I'll play with the bottom of it and constantly 
like little tiny subtle movements. But inside of my head, it's like there's 20 different stages with all sitting on the back of a squirrel and all of them have a different level of pixie dust. And it depends on which level of pixie dust I'm going to pay attention to or be able to pay attention to. But none of that has been explained. And it's, as Misha said, it's not been studied in females well enough, mm -hmm. um, which then brings me because ADHD is neurodivergence, right? So is autism. Autism, neurodivergence as well. And for example, Cosmic, when she got diagnosed autistic, I remember having a conversation with her. They don't have adult testing for autism at least in Australia, I don't know about in the States or Canada, but when I was having the conversation with her, they, she had to do the child form of testing. And even then autism manifests differently in females than it does in males. Females have not been studied enough for neurodivergence. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The, you know, and, until, in, in, until recently that, you know, the tests were more geared toward the way the, the male brain deals with it? No, it's because it was all external. I can't say all external. I, I know a couple oh. of um, adult men who have learned through childhood and teenagehood to mask. So now their ADHD presents very much like it would for a female. They're not going to show it outwardly. It's all happening internally now, but they've been trained to do that. They've not been medicated for a lot of their life and they've been trained yeah. to do that. Yeah. And it, it's one of those things, twirling, you know, fiddling with hair, nails, things like that. Adapters. If you want to find out what your adapters are, take two different shoes, go to the mall and just sit there. You will start adapting and you'll be able to see what your adapt what your particular adapters are because you're uncomfortable. And what your adapters do is make the comfortable, comfortable. You know, you start doing something. And there's something that everybody does. And you can kind of use that somewhat. It's like, okay, like mine. Unfortunately, I I hate it. I tend to chew right there. And it's like, I didn't even know I was doing it for a while. And it's like, finally, like, how am I getting, you know, I'm used to calluses here. How am I getting them here? And it's like, holy crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Black Cat, I don't even know if that's a study that they've, that they've, anyone's ever really looked into, you know, and I don't know what percentage of the shots that, you know, who's going to know when they were a little kid and most parents didn't even know what was in their shots. You See, know? And I, if I'm just going off of my family history, Okay. I'm positive my mom was ADHD. She would have been a part of that generation that we're speaking about. But if I look at her parents, I'm positive that both of them were as well. And that would have been before that. I'm not saying that there's not maybe something behind what they're saying here, but I'm also curious how much of it just might have been heightened with the shot versus this created the issue. You know what I mean? Um, Blackhead wants to ask... Can I ask the group how many of the group have had a COVID shot? Could you ask that please? And thank you. I had the beginning one that was the two, two, two parter. And um, then when they announced that there was a booster, you know, within months of, of me having, you know, and, and I was like, right up in in the first group of but i was taking care of an elderly person and she so we, she got a shot as did i and um within months they're saying that there's something there's going to be a booster and i'm like huh is that right mm -hmm. and i just thought you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna sit back on this one and i'm gonna see and uh sure enough People that had all the boosters, all the shots, all the boosters within the right time frame, yada, yada, dying, getting and dying of COVID. I thought, you know what? Fool me once. <laughs> That's me. Well, my, That's yeah, me. my, I was going to, and then my dot, I actually had before 
I actually had COVID. I tested positive for the antibodies. And my doctor told me, if you get this, I will kick your butt. And she's Apache, part Apache. So I try to do what she says. Um, but yeah, wow. because, because I've been dealing with and that. And she said, we do not want to introduce something else unknown into this. Because at that point, I was still dealing with mold, um, Mon- not Monsanto, um, weed killer in my system, um, yeah. heavy metals. I had a yeah. ton of stuff that I was all you know, trying and to detail. They all tested out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I still have, I'm still in the red for uh, weed killer. And, um, but everything else is in, you know, and it's down, but everything else is still, or everything else is all in the green now. So I'm not testing super high for cesium which that one kind of concerned me like how the heck did i get cesium in my system wow i'm gonna answer this yeah go ahead i was gonna answer this black cat it did not make make my problems worse my problems have been these problems all of my life and I especially started struggling with them in my late teens to early 20s. And I never did get any medication for it because they really didn't have any good options in those days. And uh, when I would watch people come back from from uh, from ho- ho- the local, you know, uh, psych hospital that we had, and they would be on medication and I would see, you know, what, what, what they came back. Like, I, I just, I was kind of making a mental note, like, you know what, if push comes to show, I'll keep what I got. It's kind of like the devil, you know, you know, and, um, no. but then I, uh, I, I am a postmenopausal woman now. And once menopause hit, I did not have a choice. I had to do something. So no, I would not say that COVID made anything any, or the COVID shots made anything any worse. It's just me. Always has been. The thing that really kicked my butt was um, RSV. That did a number on me. The COVID the times I've had COVID. One of my friends, he had COVID back when it was still, I think it was a Delta variant that was supposed to be the really bad one. He just had the sniffles. He built a deck. It's like, man, I wish I was that healthy, but. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, as California. far as I know, I haven't had it, but I live way it's, out here in the sticks, you know. You know, I think there's a conspiracy with that. That one person, you may have heard of her. Uh, I think her name's Tara Smiling. She's from California. <laughs> oh, yeah. <hi. laughs> yeah, and. And I managed to make it through two years in homeless shelters during the pandemic without really? getting vaccinated. Wow. I've actually, I've been, yeah, I've not been vaccinated. Okay. Did you, uh, did you, did you get it? I tested positive. They tested us uh, sometimes twice a week during the height of it. Um, and I did test positive for the antibodies twice. I, I did feel sick the first time I got quarantined for 12 days because mm. I was not vaccinated. Okay. And then okay. the second time I got quarantined for, I think it was 12 days again, but I, I did not feel any symptoms the second time that I tested. I was asymptomatic the second time. The okay. first time I was, I would say it was mild. Um, okay. Di- different than the common cold. So I do believe I had something weird. Um, yeah, but then, like I said, the second time I was asymptomatic. Thank you, Black Cat. Appreciate that. Yep, it's it's uh, it's coming up later this month. I'll be fifty nine. I uh, this whole year of of being fifty eight, I was still stuck in fifty seven, <laughs> and I had to stop and count and go, realize, oh. <laughs> I, I cheated myself out of a year. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I kept thinking I was 52, and finally I looked at my blood test results, and it's like, 55, how the hell did that happen? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Sitting down to count out, oh, my gosh. 
I never believed people when they said that that happens when you get older, but I don't have any problem believing it now. <laughs> A lot of my problem is typing, but when I was younger, I was also really good at spelling. And my dad couldn't spell to save his life. And I kept telling myself, that's never going to happen to me. And now I can't spell for beans. If it wasn't for spell check. Yeah. There's no interruption here, Black Cad. None at all. Um, I appreciate you saying that. But yeah, we uh, we talk about anything and everything um I, I i i do try to include the chat and uh you know if it goes in a lot of time so i don't overheat okay huh <laughs> oh try the laptop this time so i don't overheat my phone again okay <laughs> i always think i'm younger than i am yeah yeah isn't that the truth I remember the first time in my See, 30s when I, when I tried climbing a flagpole. Like, no, you're not 20 anymore. No, this is not <laughs> happening. No. I was going to say, did anybody experience that in their 30s? Because I'm, I'm struggling with it. Like, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm closer to 40 than I am, you know, 29 now. So yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm starting to have I... some of those thoughts to be like, oh, wait a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. definitely starting to I can't say significantly feel my age but starting to notice it let's just put it that mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. yeah. everything really started to fall apart for me about 42 ish uh, that's when okay. everything is like you can no longer carb load you can't you can't go out and woo -hoo -hoo, rock and roll things, and get up at 5 o'clock the next morning and it yeah. seems like with every decade that I turn, I notice something else that I can't do anymore as far as like what I can eat or how things affect me. And yeah. yeah. I find I'm getting much more okay. self-reflective like my head, you know, my, <laughs> as my hair goes, I become more self-reflective. <laughs> it's weird being the same paid, same age as those old people. That's true. It is. It is weird, but yeah, I had, I had a lot of anxiety going into my forties, you know, and it started okay. a few years before I got there. Yeah. 40 was a, was a tough one, you know, cause I fully expected to be married and have more kids by then. And mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anastasia. Oh, sorry, Carol. Sorry. No, you're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I just, Stasia, I can relate. You asked if anybody has been there and I, like I'm approaching, I'm approaching my fourth decade as well. Really? And, okay. Yeah, I just celebrated my 39th birthday. I thought oh, you were wow. still being a brother for pity's sake. What's that? Yeah. I thought I thought you were so you were... much younger than me. I did. Too. Yeah. I, 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 I thought think... you were younger than that too. No, That's yeah, amazing. Sounds, sounds like I'm older than you, Stasia. Um, uh, and, it, and Carol, what you're saying about having a lot of anxiety about going into the year 40, it's like, I've never, I have never thought about my age before until, until yeah. I celebrated 39 and I was like, all right, well here, here we are. Um, you know, and I'm dealing with like, thank God this tooth infection is like seeming to be clearing up oh, and I got, I. And I went Good. to the dentist again today and got a third opinion from a third doc. And he said something completely different than that. All three of them said something Ooh. completely different. Oh my gosh. Completely different. Completely different. It, like he, he did not suggest that I would need a root canal. Mm. He suggested that it could be uh, just a gum issue and he irrigated the area. And I Interesting. ordered one of those, um, the water, water pick, pick, the water things. flosser things mm -hmm. this morning. So, yeah. Anyways, all yeah. that all that being said, I've never had to be so like um uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like astute at mm -hmm. tending to myself before. You know, I was pretty like I feel like I've been pretty resilient. I lived in my car for five years. I was a dirt bag, I was climbing rocks and surfing and like all this all this and I was so dirty. Like I was a dirty hippie when I was living in my car. And now I'm like 
I got to really take care of myself because I, I'm no spring chicken. And in terms of the children thing, I don't like y'all have families. And like, I, I've never been married. I don't have children. And I don't know if that's going to happen for me because I'm not dating anybody. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it's, I, I don't know if anxiety is the right word, but there's some discomfort, I would say, in kind of not knowing where my future is going and wondering if that's fair. Not only wondering if the family thing is going to happen for me, but honestly, wonder like I wonder if that's something I even want. Hmm. I don't even know if I want that. I, I definitely want a partner to spend my life with. Okay. But I don't know that I want very, very fair. I don't know that I want children to be honest. And yeah. Right on. But I might. Anyways, uh, I just wanted to share that I can relate to what yeah. both of you are saying. No, I appreciate yeah. that because it's become a concern. Like, yeah, we're a couple years apart. I'm 37. So we're a couple years apart. But I didn't expect it. it I didn't expect to be here right now in my life. Mm. Um, you know, I expected to be with that last person for the rest of my life and obviously didn't work out that way. And then, you know, I yeah. made the decision to completely close the baby factory. And it's, I don't think I want any more kids, but at the same time, it's like, I've taken that option away from me. It's not even like we could have a surgery to fix that. They've taken my ovaries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I've made some decisions now where it's just like, okay, this is where I am. This is, you know, if ever I meet somebody who wants more kids, sorry, that that's not me. I can't, you know, and I never thought that I would have to think about that in my life. But I am. I'm techni yeah. well, technically not seriously seeing anybody, so <laughs> it's not a big thing. <laughs> and I'm probably not going yeah. to for a very, very long time. <laughs> I am I am shocked that your terror is that old though. I kept thinking she was still made of rubber and invincible bulletproof and all that. I know you, you've made comments like that. I'm like, he doesn't know how old I am. And I, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, it's funny as far as the wanting kids thing. I uh I did and then I, I didn't all of a sudden. Yeah. I can Between the 42, 42 and 45 range, I'm like, actually, no. And I turned right after I turned 40, I'm like, never mind. Should have happened, you know, when I was a lot younger. Never mind. I changed. I, I, I can I, see I, no, none, I, of I, no, none of that. Oh, you don't have yeah. any children, Carol? I have a son. He's, uh, I but I didn't, I, I did not, I did not I raise him. I did not raise him. Oh, that's right. You gave, oh, the, it, right. Was, you had, it was, it was adoption, adoption, right? Adoption, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is, yes. Is was. there an echo? Is, is that, that me? Echo? Is that me? Let's see. I, I, there is an echo. Might be me. How about now? I don't hear it now. Check, All right, check. so better. Let's see. So, um, we have Black Cat asking, "Do you think diet make uh, makes an issue?" I'm just trying to understand the context of that one. I'm just trying to find the previous comment. Makes an issue for what context here? Age. Age is yeah. Age. I would interpret that as age. age. Big I, factor. Oh, okay. I think, I think diet plays a huge role yeah. in aging. Yeah, it does. And the, the a lot of things I can't eat anymore this. in the last two, three years. Yeah, last two, three years, there's a lot of things I can't eat anymore. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have any children, but with my childhood, I think. Okay, I hear that echo again. Um, but, but with my my childhood, I decided it'd probably be. Probably be best to, you know, there's so many trauma issues. And it, it wasn't until, what, my mid 30s, I think I really got treated for that, for the uh, trauma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 
It might have been me too, because I had a uh, YouTube window open on my laptop. So I'm just going to try switching it to my phone. That way I can comment and chat still. We are the Lollipop Kids, Lollipop Kids. <laughs> and in the name of the I just muted myself, so I don't know. Myself, so I don't know. Weird. Weird. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. And it, it, food also towards the migraines, the food induced new food migraines. In my case, uh, I know I, I know I get migraines from sugar. Yeah. <laughs> mm. in, in, in my case, it was a, a lot of inflammation from sugar and white flour. Flour too, huh? Yeah. What about sourdough? Okay. Yeah. Sourdough's easier. It's still a cheat. For me, but yeah. yeah, yeah, I can do that. Occasionally, I do. Occasionally, I do. What about uh, what alternate about, uh, sweeteners alternate. like like sugar alcohols, like, like sugar erythritol and xylitol? Sugar alcohol will will um, trigger it. Hmm. So yeah, yeah. Sugar has always been a um, or alcohol is also one of the things my doctors, things that Apache doctors, I was talking that about. Apache I was talking yeah. about. Yeah. 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 And do you, have you tried Stevia as a sweetener? Do you find that that affects you too? Stevia is fine. Stevia's In fact, okay. I wonder if it's me. I wonder if it's Let me me. try closing. Let me try. Okay. okay. It wouldn't be the first time. Okay, I got no, it. it. Everything <laughs> else is closed. It's gone. Okay, maybe. Oh, wow, that's okay. weird. Maybe. No. No. It's not me. It can't be me. It's not me. It can't be me. Let me double check that I have no more other windows open. I'm pretty sure yeah. I don't. I'll close my YouTube window too, YouTube but it's, when it's, not, it's not playing on my end. Yeah, I closed everything that I had open I in addition. Yeah, I've just got uh, Restream open. You. Check, check. You. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, and it actually, there was something, Stevia actually helps my gut, it turns out. So um, I was able to find, um, I don't have any on me right now. There's actually oh, soda that's sweetened yeah, with soda Stevia. Interesting. Interesting. I've only seen the liquid drops of stevia, and I had used that when I was like being super strict about my diet, and it was no wheat, no sugar, no dairy. And so I was using stevia because um, even caffeine, the only type of caffeine I would allow myself is dark chocolate, 70 or 90% mm -hmm. dark chocolate, and green tea. That was it. Nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. The um... I'd like to get back to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've been the same boat with dark chocolate. Um, that's a pretty safe bet with me. Safe bet with me. There's nothing else there's open. Nothing else open. Yeah, yeah, I don't, to see if I don't have anything drop. open. I just don't know. Mercury in retrograde. Mercury is in retrograde. Uh, Those are great places to start quitting pop and quitting pop and pop. You know, I'm sorry you're still getting migraines. I'm sorry you're still getting the migraines. Yeah, yeah. one thing I will yeah, never one give thing up. I'll never give up is ginger ale. Ginger ale. I hear you. I hear you. It's my friend. <laughs> it's so it's good. my friend. Coffee. Coffee is the one that they'll have to pry out of my cold dead hands. Cold dead hands. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Same here. I love coffee. I haven't been drinking it though. Really? Just because I, I, for the past week or so, I've just been doing Earl Grey tea. Because I, I don't know. I, I feel like the tea is easier on my tooth than the coffee might be. It's a, the dentist today said it's not even my tooth. He thinks it's my gum, and he irrigated it. Wow. Yeah, I find myself drinking a lot more carbonated water now. Flavor, you can get naturally flavored waters. Um, I know, Bert, you did it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I thought. I thought. 
That was confusing, Carol. I was like, what, what's happening with this? Like the, the host muted you? Fine. You don't want to hear me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> testing, some testing going on. Testing going on. Yeah. Yeah. Now I can't hear Carol. Sorry, I was just trying to isolate where the echo was coming from. I'm it's, it's, beep, 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 beep. Check, check. We are lollipop kids. The lollipop kids. <laughs> I'm unmuted. Yeah. Maybe it's, is it coming from me? I don't know how it would be. Just say something again. And in the name of the lollipop kids. <laughs> 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 monk fruit <laughs> right on I've heard of that yeah I still have a lot of that too well y'all yeah it's on and off Lord Kiss Freak because I am I am muting different people and so Trying to figure to out where it. it's coming from. I, I, I hate to say it, but I, I, it, it seems that it's right. coming from your laptop somehow. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cause I, watch. You're on mute, no echo. Ooh, okay, I'll jump like back on on my phone. It's cooler now. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, I can't think it was me. <laughs> Same. I was thinking it was me too, but I closed everything. Yeah. Blackhead, thank you so much. That is so sweet of you. Aw. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Blackhead. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Oh, I forgot. Y'all can... find the answer too. Yeah. I forgot that you are now monetized. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not that I'm seeing anything from it yet, but it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. There we go. So is Mercury still in retrograde? It still is for like another week. But then so I get to feel crazy shadow. for another week still? No, well, but then so there, then there's the shadow after it goes direct, and, and that's going to last until the middle of May. Okay. Yeah, um, someone was saying that it would be uh, that would be uh, somewhere around the twenty fifth of April that it would be out of that. I think it'll yeah, go, then... go direct. Oh, maybe it's more than a week, like a week and a half, hey. Eh? But but then after it goes direct, because it's like so that it's like Mercury's moving through space, and then it goes retrograde and then it goes direct and it's moving forward but they call this space the shadow where it's like going over the space where it has already traveled again that's the shadow and mm. people say that things are still not people say things are and i don't know right i i don't know i just heard that things are not as technically out of control as they were when it was retrograde but that Things can still happen in retrograde. Krista or the Melinda, shadow. thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Shiva dog saying, hey, you greeting joyfully. I love that. And Black Cad, thank you again. That is very, very generous of you. I appreciate that Aww. so much. And yeah, you know, I do we do our best to, you know, to include everybody. And uh, and sometimes it bites us in the butt, but you know, when it doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, yeah, we're happy. We're happy you're here. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. For sure. So happy I used caps and I yelled at you. I'm sorry. What were we talking oh about? So I, no, 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 no. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never knew that was a thing until like, I don't know, two or three years ago. 
Christy has been teaching me a lot about it. I really didn't know much until getting to know Christy. And then I was like, okay, let's do this whole Reiki tarot, all of this astrology thing. <laughs> Thank you, Black Cat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, we're we're just, we're all muddling through this thing the best we can. You know, there's, a there's, it seems to be more complex to be a human being right now than it ever has. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I don't, I don't know of a time in history that seemed to have so many layers of things to have to figure out and sort through as what we have now. So, you know, that's part of why I started this channel. Let's, let's, let's start somewhere. My goodness. Yeah. I love this and, space. And I, to comment on that, I feel like even society is starting to move backwards. We're losing the rights that we already had and things that I never thought that I would see disappear. So if those rights are gone, what's next, what's the next thing to get attacked? Mm. And then uh, I was on a different channel earlier discussing it a little bit, but it's, it's the, the old boys club, the good old boys club type mentality. The old, they want to keep this generational information, like in, uh, mindset around, but we're not moving forward. They want it to stay around so badly that now we are moving backwards in society. Yeah, you know, I just wonder how they reconcile taking rights away, freedoms mm -hmm. away. You know, how 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 do they how do they reconcile that? But they don't. Clearly. No. No. Well, they don't well, they don't think Tara Smiling is going to notice. But she notices. Only she sometimes. All. She notices Only sometimes. all. <laughs> Only sometimes, though. I I think sometimes uh, sticking my head in the sand works really well, and sometimes <laughs> it, it sometimes it bites me in the ass, though. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, and I, yeah, I can appreciate that because it's like, is is me knowing going to help anything? Mm, no, mm. it's not in my sphere of influence, so. And then you mm -hmm. wake up one day and like, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't believe everything I hear. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I think that helps sometimes too. Like I had, I'm, I'm not going to name any names, but I had um, someone in my life was watching a lot of uh, doom and gloom about the eclipse. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know, and yeah. it, I was tempted to look, cause I've gone down those rabbit holes before. Sure. There's, there's a lot of rabbit holes in terms of the doom and gloom subculture that yeah. can be looked into. Mm -hmm. And I chose not to go down that path. And I feel like my experience of the eclipse was really wonderful and like actually beautiful. I sat on my patio of my new place and I had a view of it and I got the glasses from the library for free before it happened. And it just, it was really nice. I like journaled before I called my mom during it and we're really close these days now that I'm not getting loaded every single day. Great. It is great. It's a really beautiful yeah. thing. And I'm happy that I didn't allow myself to fall into the doom and gloom mm -hmm. because my experience was so much better and so much more rich, yeah. I think, because yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 I tried to keep away completely. I do have some people on my Facebook who were posting, you know, everybody posts everything on Facebook nowadays. So I had some people posting, but I had a tarot and oracle reading done during the eclipse, which was super freaking cool. And then my son called me twice. My daughter called me. Then we had a three-way call together. Like the eclipse was like the culmination of all of this poopy energy from the week before. And then <laughs> it was like all of this great stuff in a day. And then it's just like back to this wonky energy. I wouldn't call it 
poopy. Just the week before it was definitely poopy. But this week is more wonky energy. I'm, I'm, it's like I'm trying to balance myself all over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wonky is a good word, and I can relate to wonky. I can yeah. too. Yeah. A lot. Okay. Wiz, Plant Creek, what's your favorite band? Oh, Gloria Sons. They're Canadian. They're from Kingston, and uh, tragically hip, Gord Downey found them. <laughs> Carol? You know, I mean, I've been on a, on a Flying Burrito Brothers, Graham Parsons kick lately. It's It depends on when you catch me as mm -hmm. to who my favorite music is. But, you know, I just, I when I get into Graham, I really get into Graham because there's just so much there. It's so rich listening to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I, it just, he just knocks me out. He always has. So that's where I'm And I'm if you guys haven't seen right it now. yet, he posted a little short of her singing. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you knew this was coming, Tara. What is your I thought it, I thought it might be. I thought it might be. Uh, so uh, lately, similar to Carol, it depends on the day. It depends on the period of my life and kind of what's going on. Yeah. But lately, the past, since like, since last summer, I would say, I've been listening to a lot of Dirt Wire. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I, I love Dirt Wire. Right on. <laughs> I have to dig into them. Them what about you, know, you? Nick, oh sorry go yeah. ahead after i started playing drums it was rush so that's about i was gonna say rush 11, oh, rush. 11 years old sense. and then and then later on like in my 20s it became rush and then in my 30s it uh, switched and it became rush and now it's now that neil perch died it's rush yeah i'm cool. predictable <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Let's see if uh, say something, Stasia. Am I super loud still? A am I am I killing no. LK up yeah. ears? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's little, I think that's a little better. I can I can adjust it from here a little bit. I have a desk at this location, so there's actually like a little alcove behind it, whereas I didn't have that before. So that might be pulling some of the sound towards the mic. Probably hmm. not might, if I think back to my acoustic understandings. Okay. I like the color on the walls. It's interesting seeing you with color. Right? It's nice. It's nicer than just yeah. white. It's yeah. very nice. <laughs> it is different, though, because the culture that they want to have here is like um, more of a sisterhood. So they don't want you having your phone on you when you're outside of your room. So I've had to get used to having my phone on vibrate which is not wow. something that I'm used to at all. And then in my pocket, like, but like fully covered, especially during the day. Cause if I have a phone call and I miss it, the guilt factor in me and the freak out factor is I couldn't miss that phone call. I needed to have that phone call. And it's always a private number that calls you when you need to have that phone call. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, you know, in the evening now, like if anybody reaches out to me in the evening, if I'm not in my room and I'm out and about in the house, it's that, uh, I may not answer, and I am sorry. I will get back to you when I can. <laughs> right on. No worries, man. None at I see, all. I see pros and cons to that because, on one hand, I I see what their what their intention is. You know, they yeah. want to build community. Uh, on the other hand, it's like, yeah, you've got important calls. You're managing a lot. So you're mm -hmm. dealing with a lot, and you have important calls coming in. Yeah. So and and you have a child, so yeah. so I keep I, my phone on me, but on vibrate, and then that way, like when I know my son's in bed, my phone's in my room. Like okay, yesterday, okay. he uh, yesterday he had uh, voice clipped a few times, and then I was just like I ran upstairs so that I could listen to the voice clips and respond, and then went back downstairs, just made sure it's in vibrate and in my pocket. Um, but I'll be honest, them making me not use my phone for translation, like asking people what the words mean, I'm picking up more French. Oh, I was using Google Translate and DeepL all of the time at the last house, just take a picture and then go from there. Now it's like forcing me to understand what people are saying or somebody will translate for me because there's... Okay. 
There's four, including myself, who can, uh, three of them are bilingual and I'm not bilingual yet, but um, three of them are bilingual and it makes it really easy. I can just kind of be like, I'm so lost and they'll translate for me. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And plus you're getting a little bit more con conversing with, with it that way too. Yeah. And um, the issues that I'm having around um, some of my situations, it's not just me. And at, at the other house, it was harder to see that. At this house, it's very evident. Mm. So it's, uh, it is nice to see that it's not just me who's struggling with the system. Okay. It feels like it's just you after a while. After a while, it's just like, what am I doing wrong? You know, I know I'm making all the steps I need to. I know I'm doing better as a person. I know I'm doing way better mental health wise than I could have ever imagined six months ago. Yeah. But what's wrong with me for things to be not going right? And that's how I was yeah. starting to feel at the last house. But okay. that's that segmentation feeling too, I think. I think that incorporated that feeling. <laughs> Whereas here they're like, nope, it's a, it's a process. And you know, it's not just you who's struggling with certain systems and maybe you should talk to this person and get some understanding. And it's, it's so it helps a lot. It helps a lot. Oh, there's no way any of us are going to know what you're saying here, but no, I'll no, put no, it up no. yes, no, there is somebody LKF. LKF yeah. translate. <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> <laughs> Our human Google Translate, please translate. <laughs> Stasia, would you like to hear my opinion on why the system is so difficult to navigate and why it takes so long? Yes, I would actually love to. Having yeah. been through it, I could be completely wrong, but my perspective at this point, having been through it, is that it's a way for them to weed out people who are capable of phasing out of the system on their own and don't need support. Um, people, a lot of people get tired. If they don't actually need the help, they get tired of waiting. And so they go and, you know, get a full-time job and, and some people are capable of, of handling that and their mental health is such that it allows them to handle that. And so I think it's difficult to navigate because they're trying to weed out people who don't actually need it or people who are going to recover faster mm -hmm. than the system allows them to get help. If that makes sense. Yes. No, it does. Yes. And you know what? The, it's very interesting that you say that. And after I explain the house here, there's examples of that. There is examples of yes. uh, individuals who just literally have too much and can't work. They need to figure this stuff out before they can work, or they're just mentally not in a place that they can work. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's other individuals who, there's one who's choosing to be here. Like the situation is ready for them to be back to where they were. This is their decision and they want to stay a little bit longer. So I can see what you're saying. You know, there's individuals who will just leave circumstances like this because they have the means they have the support yep. um they have the mental health bandwidth yep or even just the like i'm mental health wise i'm i, I have a hard time saying that because mental health wise i'm doing way better now than i was even yeah. five years ago and well that was before i was diagnosed bipolar that was before all of these things started presenting themselves and my misdiagnosis of bipolar yeah i just don't have the space with all of the situations i'm trying to place myself in the proper positions for if, if that makes sense like i just don't have yeah. the mental bandwidth for adding in a job because i i don't know when my next appointment is going to be they all happen last minute um i should have had an appointment almost an hour ago they still haven't called so this is my life. This is how this goes. I have to be available when the system needs me mm -hmm, for yeah. me to get the placements that I need. And, and, and some people 
some people don't think like you, you're thinking very responsibly. And that's exactly what my process was too. And that's why it took me so long. If I had been irresponsible, I would have got housed a lot sooner. Yeah. Okay. And, and so people like you and people like me, I think the system is banking on us getting tired of waiting and being like, all right, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm ready to get a job, you know? And, and then we're back. We don't need the system anymore. Plus, in addition, I think there's, well, we know there's limited resources. There's not enough resources to help everybody who needs it. And so there has to be some sort of process in place to ensure that people who really, really need it, which are probably people who are going to be irresponsible and make bad choices. Like I can think of several times where I would have been housed had I made a bad choice, but I made a responsible decision and therefore I waited for longer to yeah. get my voucher. Yeah. So I, I think the, it, it takes longer for people like you and for people like me to get the help because we appear well, we present well. I've been told I present well, like by a case manager. I mean, people look at me, they listen to me talk, they, I'm educated, and they, they think, oh, she'll figure it out. She's not gonna need help, she'll figure it out. But my mental health was not in a good place when I was living at the shelters, and living at the shelters didn't make that any better. No. Yeah. No, it makes so there's, it so think, much harder, so much harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's a specific type of person that the system caters to and we're not it. Mm. And that's bothersome. And, and I, the system should be in place for individuals who need the help. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the people who make bad decisions don't deserve the help or need the help. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying if they're making the same bad decision and they're not making changes, do they deserve the help? over the person who has stopped making the bad decisions, gotten themselves sober, doing all of the work for their mental health, like they stopped making those decisions. That to me, I hear what you're saying about the system and I agree with you fully. And then this is just my butt hurtness maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. to me, it's like, I oh, made the bad decisions. I did all of that. I'm sober now. And mm -hmm that I should be rewarded for. I should be recognized for what it is that I'm doing. And just because I present well, doesn't mean that six, seven months ago, I presented this way. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of yeah. work to get here. It took a yeah. lot of struggling through sobriety, through figuring out mental health, through all of yeah. the situation to be able to get here. That's what I yeah. wish the system would recognize a little bit more. And I think you can relate with that too, Tara, because if I'm not mistaken, you got sober through your experiences with shelters too, yep. right? Yep, exactly. I had to test uh, negative for drugs and alcohol to live at the safe house that I lived at for a year. So that got me through the first year. Um, yeah. I think, I think part of it too, what I've noticed about myself, and I was like, you know what, as difficult of, of a road as it has been, learning about resilience in the peer support specialist training actually makes me thankful for the system. I hated it so much and I, I have said the same things that you have said and you're absolutely right. And I, I totally agree with you. And at the same time now being on the other side of it, looking back, I am resilient. I made it yeah. through that. And you're yeah. building resilience right now too. And yeah. you're going to be stronger and then you'll be able to help the next person if that's what you want to do. Well, you know what? Honestly, that's that's why I, I'm here all the time, too. Like, that isn't, I can't talk too much about my situation this way, you know, uh, publicly. So I at least want the understanding and experience that I've learned about myself to help somebody else. And that's why I said to you before, Tara, like, I do. I really want to help people. And then that's where my concern of, am I going to be able to, um, we found this word earlier, detach myself enough from the situations to be able to help them and not affect myself. Mm -hmm. But that's, I knew young that I wanted to help people. 
Like after I lost my mom, I, I thought it was being a suicide survivor. That is what was going to help me help people because I lost my mom to suicide. So I thought that that's what was going to be my helping people. I realized I can't do that. I, I did try for a couple of months to do a suicide helpline, like volunteering, and I cannot. I cannot. But when I come to the sobriety, you know, um, groups, the connection groups and all of that, this is where I seem to be able to help. This is where it, mental health, this is where I seem to be able to help because my experience has some information in it, whether one person gets the same information as the second or the third person, that really doesn't matter, but there's some information in it that's gonna help each one of those people. Yeah. Yeah. Is that hey. Is that the airport? Oh. Is that the <laughs> <laughs> cute? She must have just landed. Yeah. She looks happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so like I'm in Quebec, where I'm at, uh, there's a the college program basically is called Seja. And I'm gonna start taking a look into it. There's a social aid tech or social worker technician program. So it's below social worker. You're not gonna get your bachelor's of social work but you can still work uh, in shelters or in counseling offices and things like that. So that's something that I might look into. Still a fresh idea, super fresh idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's exciting that you're having ideas like that. I think it's exciting anyways. It is. Yeah. Are we going with Vegas? Tandem. <laughs> oh, Nemo. Oh, I can hear you now. Shaq. <laughs> That's I've never awesome. been to this airport before. So I'm How was your trip? <laughs> <laughs> so, How was awesome. your flight? It was good. Yeah, it good. Was good. Yeah. Um, it's warm up here though. <laughs> Go to aircon. I'll catch you later. How long, you get, get, Harold, how long? Okay. Three, six how long days. are you gonna be yeah. there? Uh, six days. Okay. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Okay. Love you. Love you too. Love you too. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the excitement of figuring out what I want to do, like I can feel it, but then there's also that apprehension that follows immediately. And I think that once I get at least one or two of these situations settled, I can think a little bit more clearer on it with no apprehension. Right now, it's I'm thinking, okay. how do I commit myself to this time to school with no idea when my appointments are going to be? Hmm. You know, to me, it's just like a job. Because the last time that I was in school, my program was three years, but I did it in 18 months. So, you know, yeah. I was in school constantly, and that's ideally what I'd like to do again is another fast track program. So how do I make time and still, because I'm if I don't get good grades, I'm not going to be happy with myself. That's just something I know about myself. And if I can't do that, and then there's no point in going because I'm mm -hmm. going to feel deflated and then my grades are going to go down and I'm not going to want to go to school and then I'm not going to go to school. And I know that that's my cycle because it happened for a couple of weeks during my electrical engineering program. And it was just like, oh man, I, I can't do this again. And just to get myself back mentally took too much. So I don't want to go into it, even chancing that that's how it's all going to start. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting. Just, I, I, I would imagine it's going to be a different experience from the vantage point where you are now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So it's going to be different, but it's going to be exciting. That is one I can feel the excitement over the apprehension, but the apprehension mm. is still there. It's not like I can't do it. I know I can. I, I definitely know I can. Mm-hmm. It's the mental capacity right now. What happens when too much happens in my situations and I just can't function mm. with school too? I don't want a chance losing, you know, possibly a scholarship. Or, yeah. you know, now I've lost this semester of school and I've paid this much money. You know, I there's too many factors to that right now. Yeah. Manny's Entertainment says that's awesome, Plant Freak. You can do anything. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think? Have we had a meeting? Oh, yeah. I feel like I've had a meeting. Yeah, it was a good <laughs> meeting. Yeah. It was a really good meeting. And I'm going to do my best. Um, I know that I'm going to be able to make four meetings a week right now. Because okay. um, I'll have to cook dinner once a week for everybody in the house, which is wonderful. It's nice to be able to cook again. That I'm loving. Making tacos yeah. last night and I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making shawarma next week. So, you know, I, I'm excited to be able to cook. Um, but uh, I'm going to try my best to be able to make that fifth meeting. If I can make something and stick it in the fridge early, then I'll do that. It just depends on my availability for time throughout the day. Right on. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be glad here. All I'm so happy are. when I'm able to. Yeah. Something about this place, isn't it? Something about the people oh that come God. here. Yeah, it's my mm-hmm. reprieve from my day. It's like, okay, 440 is coming. Nobody mess with me. Get out of my way. I need my people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Carol, I think you're doing a great job with it, and I really appreciate you. I appreciate you, too. Thank you. Appreciate that. Aww. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to pop off, but it has been a pleasure, as always. <laughs> Yeah. And, and uh, for all the uh, information back and forth, you know, relating situations, it helps me. Thank you, Tara. Of course. Absolutely. Anytime. Anytime. You have my email. You can reach out to me anytime. Mm. Okay. Thank you. I'll see y'all later. Bye. See <laughs> Bye. I've got Wi-Fi, so we'll be able to come to meetings. Yay, Cosmic! Yay! <laughs> Started a new channel. Yes, um, something surviving the cracks, I think, is the yes. name of it. Yes. We'll do that. There we go. And once this is done, I'm Tommy trying my best. Started a new channel, too. Um, relate a boat. <laughs> <laughs> They're already monetized. I I know. I knew that the two of them were going to be able to like monetize like this, but I thought it was adorable yeah. that they had a little bet going on. Yeah. And then now I think she's getting a really nice pair of shoes, and he might not be going to the zoo or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. I was falling asleep last night <laughs> listening. <laughs> I needed something that was talking instead of my head talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I fall asleep every night. Some, some, someone else starts talking and I, it, and it's coming from a screen, I'm out after yeah, a certain yeah. point in the night. Perfect. All right, guys, I am going to take off myself. Somebody made some Russian chicken, so I'm going to go have some of that. Wow. Ooh, wow. Yeah. You know in everything. So I'm really excited. <laughs> so good night, guys. Love and I'll see you we're on Friday. Yes, Monday. I'll see you guys Monday. <laughs> okay. Bye. Take care, Stog. Okay. So you well, made it. So we made it. Yeah. We made it. Um, the therapy donkey's still doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's over there somewhere. He it's like I've been watching him like with the, around the goats, and he's just been looking at him like, what the actual F. <laughs> <laughs>
They are interesting animals to watch. Yes, they are. I mean, he's got his head tilted in the whole nine. It's hilarious. <laughs> I like the animals that have a lot of personality. <laughs> yeah, Jet's, yeah, Jet's definitely in that category. <laughs> well, I say it every time, and I mean it every time. I hope you have an awesome day. Hope you do too, Ben. Thanks. Bye. Bye. If um who if you're wondering who is husband and wife, um my husband's in there asleep. His name is Steve. <laughs> when I first started this meeting, uh, it was all women except for like five guys, and they were all named Steve. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> And one of the Steves was mine. Uh, anyway, you guys, thank you so much for a great meeting. Thanks for being here, for being part of this community. I couldn't do it without you. Didn't want, don't want to do it without you. I love each and every one of you, and I hope to see you again next meeting, which will be Monday, unless we have an emergency of some kind, <laughs> like we have one other weekend. Um, but until then, peace, y'all.